Welcome back to Learning Fabric Series. We're going to do more things today, learning about the Power BI and Azure DevOps Git integration or Git repo repos, repositories for collecting all your artifacts around Power BI. Let's jump right in. We're going to go right down to our desktop here. So let me turn on my desktop. Today, we're going to go start from our normal uh, Learn Fabric workspace. So we have our workspace. It's shown up here in the upper left-hand corner. That's where we are. We also want to go in here and we want to look at the settings. There is no option right now to see any kind of code library or Git integration. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this up from scratch and give you kind of an introduction on how to get this started. And we're going to do every step as you need to start with this. And then we're going to follow up with a couple more series around going a little bit more in depth on how to best utilize this for your organization. We'll start by clicking on the ellipsis and go into the workspace settings up here in the middle. Click on workspace settings. We'll then see a menu appear and we'll see the item for Git integration. As we click on Git integration, it will then ask you to sign into your Azure DevOps account. I've already done so, so therefore it already shows up here. And because we're going to start everything from scratch, we're going to build a brand new organization for our uh, library of code. And we're going to start, we're not going to move out of PowerBI.com because the only way you can integrate this is using today. Azure DevOps. So we're going to navigate over to the Azure DevOps page. I have another page here. You can visit uh, Azure DevOps or Google that and start uh, a company or an organization there. Your Active Directory or your company uh, Azure Active Directory should be able to be used to create a, an account here to get that started. So what we're going to do is because we're doing the Learn Fabric series, we're going to create an entirely new organization specifically for capturing this Git. Yeah, Mike, that's a good point because a lot of people are probably familiar with GitHub, which also is Git. But right now, Microsoft Fabric only utilizes Azure De DevOps, which is still the same Git infrastructure. And it's all built on top of the same technology. Yeah. So all I'm doing here is adding my different items here. Hopefully I can get my code here to work. Let's see if it let me create my organization. Maybe I already created one earlier. That's my, it's denying me. Let's see here. That's a new name here. There we go. All right. So I have my Learn Fabric organization created. So if you can think about an organization, an organization is a collection of projects. This could be any kind of projects. The projects is a collection of users who are building things together. So for this example, we're going to build the Learn Fabric organization under which this is going to be fabric artifacts or fabric items. So this is going to be things like data flows or data sets or Power BI reports or uh, notebooks. The things that Microsoft links and saves the code for will then sort of store them here. So this is a bit broader than just reports. You're going to get more things than just reports. So that's why we're naming it fabric items because this is related to fabric. Right. You could also have other projects for like your SQL server team or your data engineering team that are doing other uh, repo-based projects inside this organization. So we're going to call this Fabric Items. And then we'll just make this private because this is going to be just for our organization. We'll create this project. And what it will do now is it'll now build out the project for us. And when we land into this, you'll get a nice, uh, clean, easy page here. This is really around workflow and work development for developers. So you'll notice here we have like these things called boards. It's like a Kanban board or tracking tasks and items. The thing we really care about is repos, uh, repositories. This is where we're going to do a lot of our work. One thing I'll just kind of point out here as well, there is a breadcrumb at the top of this. The first item in your list is your organization. The second item is your project. If I go into Learn Fabric, this is where we can see all the various projects for my entire organization. Again, all this is customizable. You can build this. If I click back into Fabric Items, we'll go into my specific project. Okay. Now, how does this relate to Power BI? Power BI needs a place to put the files. This is what the repository is called. So we're going to go into our repos area. And you'll notice that there is a default item list set up here. There's already a default item here set for fabric items. So I'm just going to name something different here just to show you how to create your own repo. We're actually going to click the option here for new repo. And we'll put this down. We'll click new repo. And we'll just call this... Um, well, actually, I like to name these, my opinion here, I like to name these the same way that we're naming them inside PowerBI.com. So we're in the workspace of demo-learn-fabric. 
So I like to correspond the names between the repos. Now, there's other patterns on how you may build this in the future, but for now, for this demo, this is how we'll do it. So we'll just say demo dash learn fabric. That's going to be my repo that I'm going to use to collect all my data. I'll hit create here. And what it will do is it'll immediately create a readme file. The readme file is basically a text file that you can use to make instructions. I would highly recommend edit this readme file when you're done. Build your process around how your company needs to use Git, Power BI, Fabric, all of that. Document what you do here. This is, this is where you document your process and load this. That way, anyone who finds this in the future, they can understand why this is here and how it exists in concert with or in connection with PowerBI.com. Mike, that's a really great point, especially once you start getting to the world of Git and also the project-based uh, items such as Azure DevOps, documentation is critical. Yeah. And I can quickly, I can easily edit by clicking on the file and just clicking the word edit over here on the right-hand side. And then I can, you know, quickly edit this thing here uh, and add new um, comments here right into this file and we're good to go. And then I can commit this back to my repo. And what will happen is it'll track those changes It'll uh, push them where I want them to be labeled. And then I can then commit this right back to the branch. So and if it's you're wondering, yeah, making if you're changes wondering here. why there are hashtags in that code, this is because that's the markdown language, which is yes. meant for readmes and, and for documentation purposes. Love it. Then going back up here, we can see we have, in fact, updated our documentation to be 100% accurate and true all the time. With it, that, like I said, good documentation. Good, great document. We're starting on a great, a great step here. So <laughs> with that being said, now we have a place that the code can go. We have the, the, the catcher's mitt of where the data is going to go. So now what we're going to do is using this demo of Learn Fabric, we'll keep this in, in memory here in our minds. We'll go back over to our Power BI data set here. And this time we'll click on the organization. You'll notice here there's only two items. The reason being is I just created it. So it has not pulled in the new uh, organization here. So I'm going to try refreshing my page. And now I'll go back into my settings again. We'll then show you that this is the integration. And now you see the little spinning wheel that just came up. That means it's supposed to go grab all the recent items. So there's my Learn Fabric organization. I'll go grab that. We will now pick the project that we care about. So our Fabric items is there. And I'm not seeing our new repo. Oh, Fabric items, yep. And then under the Git repo, we're gonna see our demo for Learn Fabric. So this is the project name, Fabric items. Our Git repo is our Learn Fabric workspace. This corresponds to the PowerBI.com workspace, again, from a management standpoint. And then there's this thing called branching. We don't really care about this, but for now, we're just going to pick the main branch. We'll explain this more in detail in other sessions. There's a lot of really cool things that can happen with this branching technique. For now, we'll just use this thing for main. So I'm going to click on main here, and I'll hit, uh, if you wanted to add folders, which we will skip for now. Again, this is another pattern that you can use. If you want to have multiple workspaces linked to the same library of rep the repo, you can add a folder naming that will also add depth to your folders as well. Again, we're going to skip that for now. We're going to stay simple initially here, and then we'll uh, elaborate that in future sessions. Next, we'll click Connect and Sync. And so what will happen now is it'll now add our new icon. So as it's thinking here, you'll see this icon now. The source control icon now appears, and this only appears after you've enabled the Git. Right. So once you have this, it will now sit here and think about all the different files. Now, not every file type is supported today. You'll notice here, a Power BI report is synchronized. The report lives inside uh, the Git repo. Today, you cannot support a data flow that's not currently supported. However, a data set is also synchronized. So you're going to notice here in the Git status column, there are going to be certain things that are synced or not synced. And if you make updates to things, they will get out of sync. So basically, I can make changes, which means I've adjusted the code of the report or the pagination report or something else, but it doesn't match what's in my source control or the Git library. And Mike, that's a very really important concept because most people are used to uh, syncing in SharePoint or OneDrive, which yes. as soon as you save, it syncs back to the cloud. In this case, I can make a change, whether it be in the workspace or in the original source. And those changes do not happen until there's a, something called commit, which we would do in our source control. So let's go through a little bit more further here. Let's actually go through an experience of, I'm going to go into report. I'm going to make a slight adjustment to it. So I'm going to edit it in the service. And, and again, Tommy, you made a great point there. I really want to point out, you typically would save all this information inside SharePoint. 
This is the first time we're seeing a much more robust and synchronizing process to store the actual data of my reports. Mm -hmm. This is a huge improvement over just storing files inside SharePoint. I love this technique. This is so powerful. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to slightly edit this report. I'm going to click on the edit button, click on my visual, and I'm just going to make it a bit smaller. And maybe I want to expand the size of this visual down below, make it a bit taller. Okay. I've made just a very minor change on this report. Now I can go back here and go back to the reading view up here in the left-hand corner. And when I do so, it'll say, you made some changes. I'll say, yes, please save these. I'll hit save now. And now my report's now saved. So in order to see these changes represented in the workspace, we'll go back over here to the left-hand nav. I'll click the drop-down menu and click on my workspace location. Which wouldn't you think, Tommy, that should be named workspace, I think. It's so so confusing <laughs> uh, that that's not a workspace. But okay, we'll get to it. We'll go back to our workspace here. And what you'll notice now is it made an analysis. It said, wait a minute, you modified this report. It's in this state called uncommitted. Now, the icon is still there. It's not this little X icon, meaning not supported. This means there's a change and the library of code does not match your report. There's something different here. Okay, wonderful. We're actually going to go up here and you'll notice there's a nice big red icon for number one. One of the artifacts or items, one of the items have changed and now it's different. If I click on this, you'll be able to see here, look right here in the source control. Okay, we're looking at the main branch. This is that the branch of the of the git that's we're that we're looking at. It's a, this will be important later. We can actually add a message here around the commit message. So this is the message of the change, what's changing. And then it lets you select what is the status of that change. So let's go over here and just say uh, adjusted um, visual sizing. Visual sizing on page one. Now, this is really good to put here as well. Every time you make a change, mm -hmm. don't just commit something without adding a me message of what you did. One of the patterns you're going to want to use when you're using source control and particularly Git is make changes small and often. So do your work, make the change, describe your change, and push it back into the library. The reason you do this is a lots of small changes, if there's any kind of conflicts or issues or something that's broken, you don't lose a lot of work. Now, typically you won't lose work in this scenario because you're really, literally doing one thing at a time, uh, but that's there as well. And Mike, that's another really, really important aspect here and why you want to do the small changes. Every time you do a commit, it basically adds to a ledger which you can see all the history of all the commits that you've ever done in a repository. Which so is if I awesome. want to see with the documentation, oh, that visual size is way too large. I want to revert back. There's a way to do so. Exactly right. So now what I'm doing is I'm going here. I'm checking the item at the top. You check the item in all the items that are changed. I only have one. So it's checking that one item. Let me go down to the very bottom here. And then I make the commit. Now, this is going to commit the change to the library. You notice there is an undo feature here. So uh, I don't know if that will undo my commit uncommitted change and revert it, but I'm assuming that it will. We won't do it right now. But for now, we're just going to commit this as well. We'll hit commit here. It's going to commit our changes back to the library. And then we'll see again. Yay, our file has been synchronized. It's now updated. Very wonderful. So we now have our changes committed. There's no new updates. Everything's happy. And if I even refresh it here, you can see there's no changes. Cool. What happens under the hood? I mean, this is very, so just a point of reference here. Before, to save versions of files and or things, I was doing a whole bunch of jumps through hoops and things right. in SharePoint and bringing them down locally and publishing them and making sure I see it. This simplifies that entire experience. That was... This is way better. And this is a great borrow from the IT and the enterprise organization this just took Power BI, this grew it up. This is this is the grow up story of Power BI. I just went from working in a workspace to now this is enterprise grade. People and organizations can really stand behind this because now we can really implement process and process change around the reports that we're building. So I can't emphasize this enough. This is the the ability of Power BI of growing up into that fabric environment. This is true collaboration, Mike. Totally agree with you on that one. So I'm over here in my repo. I went back over to Azure DevOps. So I'm going to hit refresh on my page. And what we'll see here is we'll notice there's a whole bunch of other things that have been added here. These are all the different folders that we're seeing here. Report, report, report. And they were all being committed here, committing 
these different items here directly in here. And you can also notice here, just now I committed my individual item here. So now that we have this, let's just quickly diagnose what's going inside these folders. So these are the items we're committing. If I go look at individually one of these items, these this will look very familiar if you're doing a Power BI building using the uh, PBIP format. We have a report.json, a meta.json. So if you look at these things, these are the descriptions. This is the definition of how the report works. Now, this is very hard to read because there's a whole bunch of junk in here. Um, <laughs> however, there is sections. Here's the filters. These are different visuals. This is the visual container. So this is describing every visual on the page and where they live. You can also see here, this is on a page called page two. So there's a lot of really rich data in here, but this is the definition of how the report works. We're not gonna go into all the details of this report or the different reports here, but essentially all you need to understand is everything in this Git repo now is a direct copy or you know code-based versions of everything that lives in powerbi.com. For those and, of you who have ever asked, what if I converted my Power BI file to text? You have your answer now. There it is. So you don't have to do the convert file to zip and then unpack it and all this other kind of stuff. It's now already here. And you notice that everything here is on this main branch. Now, stuff we'll get into in the future. There is a lot more control around this one. You can add approvers to changes. You can have branching on changes. So making changes that don't affect the production environment. So there's all these really cool new techniques we can use that will help us borrow techniques from IT and developers and directly apply it to Power BI. That, Tommy, I think is probably as much as we want to go through right now. This is kind of the high-level overview of how to turn on your Git integration, how to make a change, and get your changes of your files back into the source control. The last thing I'll wrap up here and thoughts will be is, this is so cool. I really like this feature. So you definitely need to learn how to do this and play with it. Um, you, you will definitely need a, an Azure DevOps integrated workspace or, or the Azure DevOps um, repo and library. Those projects are essential to using this feature. I'm, I, I think at some point they would probably add GitHub, but for right now, it's only in Azure DevOps. Yeah. So that's the only way you can get this. The underlining technology for Git is the same. So I'd imagine at some point in the future, you'll be able to switch to any other, like, uh, you know, other wow. code providers that you have out there. It's just Git at that point. With that, I think we're all done. Any other final thoughts, Tommy, you want to wrap with? No, I, I'm just going to reiterate what you said. This is the next step for anyone in the enterprise space. I am so excited that this is available. Yeah, we've been trying to get through the notebook exercises that we were doing here on Learn Fabric because we wanted to get to this part because this is exciting. This is really game-changing stuff. And with this feature alone, I actually feel comfortable now letting users build reports in the service on top of existing data sets. This is the first time I'm having a glimpse of light at the end of the tunnel. I had all kinds of bad experiences up until this point about creating reports in the service and you could never get them out. Now I can adequately look at this and going, I don't think I really need to have desktop files of every single report now. I could probably lean on the Git and the Git integration to help me revert my changes, make updates, all the other rich things that go along with that as well. With that, thank you all very much. Stay tuned for more videos with Learn Fabric.